What's up guys, Deity Cthulhu here, back at you with another Black Ops 4 video. In today's video, we're going to be doing the second segment of Sweats vs. Sweats. In this series, it is a stack team on my side versus a stack team on the other side. And for whatever reason, everybody sweats. Now, this match is a little different because there's a particular player I've come across around three times now on the enemy team and he never ceases to amaze me his name is oh yeah right there uh render underscore x tricks he's undoubtedly a good player and i will not deny that however he just sweats his heart out every single flipping time i come across the guy and I don't mind sweating, but it's one of those things that if I come across you and that's what you're known for, that's a little sad that I automatically know you're going to sweat. And he did. So you're going to see this is a very, very, very tight match. And a couple things that I did single-handedly saved the match. I'm not bragging. I'm just calling it like it is. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy rolling and uh yeah let's do some commentary all righty so we're waiting for the match to start sorry about this i'm still a little new to everything all right here we go so first things first we're gonna pause this for a quick second whenever you're on this side of the map most likely everybody is gonna try to go to the church like building in the middle and if you're on the side that we are the south side you're gonna want to push up from this right hand side like so and i'm not saying you know it's perfect or anything because you're gonna get challenged almost every single time i already knew people were coming i took a look in the church didn't see anybody i ran back and boom there you go everyone's right there everyone and their mother took that route that I was just telling you about so that was a bad start unfortunately might have gotten two kills but hey they uh for whatever reason they didn't feel the need to push church it's whatever they could have taken control if they wanted to now the good thing about the cordite with double fmj is most of the cover that they take it's just not gonna help they can't do too much. Uh, I'm going to annihilate them, especially through this little metal uh, turbine. If they are on the outside of it, like on the right-hand side or left, and I shoot through at an angle, it's going to go through and get them. So, I got lucky. I got myself a UAB. Um... We're, we're doing call-outs. Uh, keep that in mind. Unfortunately, uh, they don't always listen to me. Uh, even though they're really good, they're precise and stuff. I asked somebody to check the tunnel and stuff, watch my back while I was watching uh, numerous other angles. I can't cover, you know, three, four, five angles. You just can't. Uh, I don't care who you are, professional or not. You just can't do it. Um, so I ended up dying right there. The... Uh, how I, the telltale of when I know Render's gonna end up sweating is if he's running a Cordite. Uh, or not, I'm sorry, not a Cordite, uh, Maddox. When I saw him with the Maddox, I instantly know. And I don't have any harsh feelings towards him. I just get really annoyed because we keep meeting in the same exact, you know, kind of setting. And it's just like, dude, I just want to play the game. I, I don't want to keep having the sweat. So they're over here on the left-hand side. As you can see, I run Engineer on his Cordite class, so I already knew that Tac Deploy was there. By me knowing the Tac Deploy was there, it just made it a prime time for me to try and get as many kills as possible. Actually, on top of it, Render stepped his game up to be even more annoying, and uh, yeah, he uses the VMP. So, they spawn trapped us. I was getting extremely annoyed. Uh, they were being very unnecessary. If you're going to sweat, sweat. But don't don't sit there and spawn trap both sides. I don't even do that. 
And when my team does something like that, I immediately call them out and I say, you stop that. You know, don't do that. That's not fun for either side. I don't take fun in sitting there spawn trapping people. Now, you know, it it depends. You know, if I get the stuff done to me, then I'll, I'll probably end up doing it back, even though I, I don't typically do it. So it's just, I guess situation dictates. So they flipped the spawn. They didn't tell me. And uh, immediately I, I saw a guy back there. I thought my uh, friend had that. He didn't. So take that guy out. And now the spawn is flipped again. The really difficult area to just take control over is this exact area where I'm at right now because there's so many head glitches and stuff and then when you're uh when you go up a little further there's a window right there on the right hand side where i'm aiming the upper right hand side that's really hard if the person's got a good angle and double fmj they can do some real damage take out a lot of people and then when you go in the church the church is just a free-for-all i got extremely lucky that i was able to do a lot of damage to that guy even though i was concussed in case you guys didn't notice, concussions actually make it to where your bullets don't even go straight. I don't know what they were thinking when they designed those, but that that just, you know, phys like physics and everything just blows my mind. Your, your bullets go straight out of a gun. You'll see bullets in Black Ops 4 go at like... 30 45 90 degree angles up out of the gun that's not possible it, it really it's humanly impossible the bullets go straight so it just blows my mind when i get concussed and you're watching the bullets go in weird directions they don't even go straight just crazy stuff so we were already getting really annoyed by the fact that the guys were using concussions it just made it that much more annoying so I got my ulti and a UAV, so we 100% know where these guys are at. They are pushing the church like no other. I already knew this guy was right here. He tried to hide in the corner. Now, this is where we take the league again. I got a sniper's nest. I was super excited to get it. I knew it was going to help, so I called that in right away. No hesitation. So, a very difficult thing as I said, is getting control over the church area. Where I'm at right now, typically you would just be on long gunfights. Someone will end up flanking you. But that double FMJ, there's nowhere they can really hide. He has all that wooden area, but my bullets go right through it. You're going to see. I'm shooting him through the pillar. I'm shooting him through everything. That's why I run this class. It's just... The... The fire rate, the accuracy, and the penetration with double FMJ on the Cordite is just unparalleled to anything else. You just can't beat it. Now, you're going to undoubtedly notice that I am playing very passive-aggressive because I didn't want to get off my streak at this point. Um, they're being sort of kind of the same way. They're pushing in groups. I was super shocked. This is honestly the first time I've ever seen someone do that. Out of the entire time I've played this game and this map, I've never seen somebody use the scythe in that tower and shoot out of it and into the church and into the open. I, I Honestly, I was never taken out by that. But the unfortunate thing is, yeah, I know, I shot his body. But the unfortunate thing is he just was not paying attention at all. So you're going to have your ulti and whatnot, and you're not going to be paying attention. So I heard footsteps. I thought somebody was push uh, pushing this to come up and get me. So, uh, you know, I'm watching, watching, watching. Like, oh, where the heck is this guy? Still watching. I finally was like, okay, no, we're good. It's the craziest thing too. The second I hop down, there that guy is, which tells you he was he was lurking. If you can, I know not a lot of you run scavenger and whatnot. If you have the time, always destroy enemy scav packs. 
there's a reason for it. It gives you quite a bit of points, and sometimes you'll only be 10, 20, 30 points off of your next streak. It will really help you. So do every small thing you can to get points, especially like if you have double FMJ on the Cordite like I run. Take out barbed wire. Take out the shields. Do everything. It really helps. And you'll be streaking up like no other. So, that's another time that I definitely called everybody to the church. I told them, I said, the whole team's coming to the church. We need to watch all angles. Unfortunately, the team uh, didn't get there in time to where we could have watched everything. So, they have complete control over the church as of that moment when I died. I got another UAV. If you're wondering how I'm getting my streak so fast, this class utilizes the good old fashioned ComSec device. UAV energy levels 50% depleted. I start clearing out the church immediately. I see that they're going up behind, and I had a feeling that they were going to be pushing up from the church. Um, I flip back around. I see everybody because my friend's using his recon. And this is where it really picks up, uh, you know, they're just, they're all blobbed up right there. I thought the guy was going to kill me. He absolutely messed up. That is why you never get cocky. When you throw that concussion, if you do not take that person out, it wears off. I don't know why people sit there and think it, you know, it, la I don't know. Maybe he thought it lasts forever. Maybe he got cocky. That was really stupid on his behalf. He could have taken me off of you know my role and he didn't and he paid the price so going unfortunately it didn't matter I turned the corner and get blasted anyways I can't remember if I streak up again during this so we're gonna end up seeing real soon Alright, so I got killed by Seraph's Annihilator. One of my boys, Go Crazy, DTA Go Crazy, ended up taking her out immediately after I died, which was a saving grace as well. Uh, yeah, little unfortunate. Who I, I don't know who that guy is using the SOGS. Let's take a look. Uh, okay, HTLR. I'm not going to pronounce that. Always someone with an offensive name. Anywho, uh, the, the dual akimbo SOGs are just, they're, they're so bad. It's not even funny. They're not even worth using. When the game first came out, those things were absolutely amazing. I got plenty of videos of me just absolutely destroying everything in, its, in their mother. So they put attack deploy right outside this. I already knew where it was, so I just started pre-firing, and I had a feeling they were gonna start rushing the church again, which they did. I got taken out by a sparrow. I didn't really know where the hell that came from, but I just got my ulti, and there we go. The rest of the, it, it's it's a GG's at that point. They can't do anything. The crazy thing is, when someone knows they're getting vision pulse, they'll still try to challenge. It's ridiculous. Get on a head glitch, do something. Just know that that the whole team knows where you're at. For you to just sit in the open is absolutely insane, especially when you know that you're being scanned. So I don't get why people do that, but it's whatever. Had I gotten a strike team, nice little double kill right there, this whole match would have just been done probably about three minutes sooner but there you go we ended up winning you can clearly tell by the tactics the whole team's using and everything that they were sweating so let's take a quick look i went 37 11 my friend ewo went 26 and 20 dta go crazy 25 15 opsidy 21 13 javelin 23 19 and then this guy was a random. Um, it's whatever. So you see that guy's mic moving. I did say something at the end. I was just like, I, I was hoping Render was going to get on his mic. And I told him, I'm like, Render, like, 
Can we stop meeting like this? It's getting super annoying. Can we just have a normal match? And I don't know if he just doesn't remember people, but I definitely remember him. And uh, the Shadow Reaper guy comes up and says, well, what'd you, what are you bitching about? I was like, I'm not bitching about anything. I'm just stating a fact. And then Render finally ended up getting on his mic. I was like, hey, what's going on? And I told him. I said, hey, man, you know, like, super annoying. Can you just, like, not sweat every single time I come across you? Just have a normal match? And he's doing it. I think he's either in a four or five man, but he's doing it just to show off or whatever. Because I I don't know. It's weird. When you know someone's going to sweat, you're going to come into the match ready just in case they sweat. I knew in the next, like the first 30 seconds that it was going to be a sweat fest. So it is what it is. Uh, I love intense matches sometimes, but this, this one was just super annoying. I, we might have won, but it's just like at what cost? Then everyone's pissed off and annoyed. No one really wants to keep playing. I usually get off for the day when I get super annoyed. But yeah, guys, that is Sweats versus Sweats episode two. Um, it's random when I come across uh, a match that is worthy of being one of these episodes. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe. I do my best to go over tactics and stuff that I do to help you guys better yourselves in this game. I don't care about Modern Warfare and stuff like that. Um, my comfort zone is Black Ops 4. It has less issues in my opinion than Modern Warfare. So that's what I stick with. Anyways guys, I'll see you in the next video. Till next time. Peace!